Hello and welcome back, my fellow turkey viewers. I am really excited to talk about episodes four through six, and it does feel like the pacing has picked up a little bit. I'm really enjoying the new characters that are introduced, and the television show is taking the relationships of the characters directly from the books and expanding upon them. I think it's doing a great job. The Remembrance of Earth's past trilogy isn't an extremely character-driven story, so I think this works much better for the TV format. We've had some really fun moments this week. Science fiction can be weird and goofy, so I think it's only fair that our characters are a little strange and silly too. Meeting Dr. Shah at the Astronomical Observatory was highly enjoyable. And does she also gets a new partner named Bing Bing? And her deadpan personality is really cute and cool and they are adding more personality to the series and I think it's helping it soften it up a little bit. But just because it's a little bit softer with more character driven moments doesn't mean that we have abandoned science as a main character of the story. So I think the sci-fi fans should be happy as well. Now episode 4 continues with more speculation of the shooter and farmer theories as Wang pauses his research on his nanotech material, the countdown vanishes before his eyes. He calls Shen Yufei and accuses her of a trick. This was my favorite moment of the episode because I thought the acting was really powerful. Wang Miao was screaming at her and calling her a shameful illusionist. He wants proof. If there really are shooters and farmers out there, he wants them to show him a sign that cannot be faked with technology. So she tells him he needs to watch the cosmic microwave background for his proof. And as we move to episode 5, Wang Miao witnesses the cosmic radiation levels and learns that this data cannot be faked. He's on the verge of an emotional breakdown and is intercepted by Da Xi. Now this was my standout moment of episode 5. They go get food and alcohol and Wang Miao comes clean and truthfully explains everything that's happening to him. Da Xi is becoming a grounding force for Wang Miao. He's a simple man and he doesn't question the philosophy of the universe. He's learned that when something strange is happening that there's always someone behind it. Now this conversation builds upon the shooter and farmer theory because Wang doesn't believe that the entity responsible for making the universe flicker is a person. Perceptions don't allow humans to see the bigger picture. The shooter and farmer are outside our understanding, and when we can't see from the perspective of them, they can look like gods or supernatural forces capable of anything. And it reminds me of the quote of Arthur C. Clarke that says, magic is just science that we don't understand yet. Anyways. It's great getting to see these two characters work together and bond after five episodes. They now have a partnership and it is solidified by Dashi changing Wang Miao's contact information in his phone from Nano Coward to Wang Miao. And I was not expecting humor in this show. It honestly keeps surprising me. As we move to episode six, things jump around a little bit. We are bringing multiple plot lines together and Dashi is rewarded for his work. He gets a new office and even a new partner. I'm immediately a big fan of Bing Bing. I also like the mural with the three sons in Dashi's new office. I've said it before, but the set design in this show is really fun. Commander Chang and the Battle Command Center are ready to mobilize. And I'm also really growing attached to his character as well. I'm liking the actors a lot. Wang visits Yao Wenjia and then Da Xi, but the editing cuts back and forth between both meetings, which made it a little bit hard to focus on the conversation. This was really my only negative criticism, and you can tell that there was some post-production editing that made things a little bit choppy. As we move back to Wang Miao's visit with Yao Wenjia, we realize that she has this very soothing presence on Wang Miao and gets him to understand that physics isn't actually dead. It's just that our understanding of it has changed. And I really like this conversation about religion and science in Copernicus because it's important for the game segment of the story and I know where that goes. So I'm just really excited to see this happening. 
the theme of religions versus science versus supernatural forces versus perception keeps weaving throughout these three episodes, and it goes hand in hand with the shooter and farmer theory. I think from a philosophical standpoint, they're making it a little bit more interesting than they do in the books, but that's just my opinion. Now, during the meeting with Wang Miao and Da Xi, we learn about Ye Wenjia's family during the Cultural Revolution, and I'm happy to see that it wasn't completely left out. This is a driving force behind Ye Wenjia's actions. She is who she is and does what she does because of the trauma that she's experienced during this time of anti-intellectualism. It is a catalyst that drives the entire story forward. This one moment, the murder of her father, changes the fate of humanity. I'm hoping that there's more coming. They could be saving it for later, so I just have to wait and see before I form any type of opinion. So Wang Miao agrees to go undercover and be a science-savvy turkey, and Da Xi will be his bodyguard turkey. And I love this so much. The show is allowing itself to be fun and silly, and it's a great moment of levity after all of the doom and gloom with the countdown. The episode ends on Shen Yufei communicating via text with an unknown entity. She is instructed to bring Wang Miao into the frontiers of science and make him a believer. If this fails, the order is given to kill him, and I think it's a strong ending to a strong episode. This was my favorite of the three. There's humor, there's philosophy, there is science, there is dancing. It has everything that I'm looking for, and I think the pacing is getting better. I'm enjoying the smaller conversations between our characters, and I think it's comforting to see them laying down some plans. This feels like a setup episode, getting our characters into position before moving them on to the next segment of the story. I think the episodes are improving as the story moves forward, and I'm very happy with the show. Wang Miao and Da Xi synchronizing their countdowns together was just really pure and fun to watch. I'm really glad that Tencent has made this show accessible to the world and for free. This is so uncommon in the world of streaming. But that's it for these three episodes. Like and subscribe for more three-body content, and I will see you next time.